Hi everybody and welcome to our show. This is From This Corner TV and I'm Marilyn Dayton, your host and producer as always. And I'm excited for this show and you'll find out why in just a second. But first I want to remind you that we're not here just to entertain you. We're here to educate you and provide interesting information that you can use in your lives, okay? Now I want to ask you a question. Are you stressed out? Do you want more energy? Do you need balance in your life? Well, fear not, because we've got an expert with us today. And she's going to talk about a step-by-step -step process to getting balance in your life. We all need that, don't we? <laughs> well, Debbie Sodergren, did I pronounce that right? Yes, Sodergren, is uh, the owner of Up Vibrations. Uh, she's an energy body vibration expert. Let me repeat that. Energy body vibration expert. You're going to learn what that means. She assists people to go from being stuck and frustrated to having clarity and empowerment so they can live their lives being happy and having a purpose. I love it. Welcome to the show, Debbie. Oh, thank you. It's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having me. I've been wanting to have you here for so long. <laughs> We've been talking about it, and we said, let's just do this. Yeah, well, we both know that there's no such thing as a coincidence. So That's right. Things happen for a reason, and I happen to be here during this holiday season. Mm -hmm. And um, a good subject matter is de-stressing. So. Exactly. And transformation, even though September is usually the month for transformation, you know what? Any time is a time for transformation. Mm -hmm. And we're always transforming and changing, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think um, as human beings, we do a lot like the seasons. So we shift according to the seasons, depending where we live. Mm -hmm. I, I do think we do go into some type of seasonal sh change. So in September, you were talking about when the kids go back to school and parents are getting the kids ready and then the parents go into what their routine is going to be because it's going to change mm -hmm. from summer when things are very carefree and laid back to all of a sudden, all right, the kids are on a schedule and I've got to be at these meetings and get them here and get them there and it just shifts. And then when the holidays come, you get ready for all your other family members that you haven't seen in a long time. And sometimes there's dynamics there that can... Um, they can challenge us. Uh huh. I don't want to say stress <laughs> us. I want to say they can challenge us. <laughs> yes. So let's keep going through the through the seasons here. Because so tell us what happens after the holiday season. So winter, when we go into winter at the end of December, um, what happens energetically is if we follow the seasons of the earth, it's a time to go inward. It's a time to do self reflection. It's a time to journal, to read, to really do self-care on seeing what has worked for you in the past 12 months, mm -hmm. what has not worked for you in the past 12 months. And as you come out of the winter seasons, and the weather is very cooperative by keeping us inward, by having it here in the Northeast be cold mm -hmm. and snowy yeah. and dark early. So sometimes as we come out of that season, we get more toward February, March, and we have a couple days where it's all of a sudden sunny and a little bit warmer and you can feel the sun coming in the windows. Mm -hmm. We want to open up cabinets and cupboards and we just want to start cleaning and purging things out. So I think going into spring, before we merge into the new life of what we are going to be bringing to life, mm -hmm. we have to clean out. So that's a very good time, that end of February, beginning of March season, to really purge things, purge things that are no longer serving you inside your house of your body. Mm -hmm. I think that's really important. So there's limiting thoughts that we had been told that we'd never really learned how to process to get rid of. Or there were things that 
we no longer believe it anymore. It doesn't work for us because our perceptions have shifted in our beliefs on what we have now evolved and transformed into. So it's good to really get rid of those things, just like you're gonna clean out the clothes, the things that no longer fit you and serve you any longer, mm -hmm. you're gonna donate them to somebody else. So. Yeah. Interesting. And then we go into... Into spring, the birthing of new things. Yes. So I love spring. I like all the seasons. I think I'm really... I'm one of these people that I, I like the season I'm in. I have a favorite, but I enjoy the change of the seasons. I look forward to them. I look forward to... I, I do. I look forward to winter. I look forward to having those nights when I can light a fire in the fireplace and cozy up and with a good book or do some knitting or write some things down that no longer serve me. And, mm -hmm. and my process in the winter months are I, I write a journal and when I'm done with the journal, I review it and then I burn it in the fireplace. Oh. It's a great way to release it and let it go back up to the universe because it's no longer serving me. It's taking space up in my vessel of my body, but once I transfer that down my arm and write it on the paper and then burn it, it's a great way to get it go, let go of it. And then mm -hmm. I have room in my body to plant new thoughts and new seeds of excitement of, wow, what is it I want to try now? What do I want to do differently? And now I have room to do them differently because I've made space for it. And I think it's really important to do that. I love that. I really do. <laughs> Thank you. And then that leads us into summer, which is all mm -hmm. about being outside and being active and um, getting the warmth of the sun and, and just vit vitamin E. And, and maybe reconnecting with the earth with our bare feet and the ground. Yeah, I do that every season. In, in the winter, we used to have a hot tub when we first moved into our home. And that's one of the ways that I would really um, think about consciously connecting to the ground was going from the house to the hot tub, uh -huh. you know, pitter-pattering on the cold earth in order to get there. So <laughs> it's not a bad thing. No, not a bad thing because we actually do that at our house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, this is interesting because, um, you know, like we're always changing. Uh, some people don't want to change. Oh, yeah, because you know? we are, um, human beings are creatures of comfort. And so... The only thing constant in life is change. Mm -hmm. And so by not wanting to do the change, we get very comfortable and very settled in our ways. And the body's the same way, because if you think about it, they say in order to start a new habit, you should do it for 21 days minimum, because oh. muscle has memory. And so by doing something for 21 days, A, you're building new pathways in the brain mm -hmm. in order to start a new habit. That's one piece of it. The other piece of it is the muscle memory. You're going to do things differently. So the body will start craving it when you don't do it anymore. And our cells have memories too, don't they? Yes, our cellular structure has memory because that's yes. what your muscles and your body's made up of is mm -hmm. different cells. So yeah. yeah, each individual one has memory. That's fascinating. <laughs> Fascinating stuff here, and it's going to get even better. Let's start at the beginning so our viewers can learn who you are. Okay. Okay. Sure. So what happened when you were three years old? Well, I was actually four. It was right before my fifth birthday. Um, I went in for my kindergarten physical, and they, uh, my pediatrician, the doctor at the time, had noticed that I had a strange heart palpitation thing. And so he sent me to a cardiologist, and lo and behold, everyone's born with a hole in their heart, and mine didn't close all the way. Ah. So um, I had open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. um, after my first open heart surgery, my parents came in to visit me, and my mom said, you know, her color looks really off. And so upon the doctor and the nurses reevaluating me, they realized that my stitches didn't take. And so I had to have surgery again. Oh. So they had family members come in and visit with me. And um, I had to have surgery. This little four-year-old girl had to go through another eight-hour surgery to repair mm -hmm. the hole in her heart. And I believe it was during the second open heart surgery that I had my out-of-body experience. Mm -hmm. um, I remember it. I remember that there was like a light tube going to me. My four-year-old expression, it's, it's my mind, is it was a spaghetti string. And it went from the girl on the table from her to, to my belly button. And I was above the table looking down at her and seeing what they were doing to her. And, and I, you know, turned around and I kind of went upward um, from what I recall, it was like light, but it wasn't like a 
like they say, you, you know, this blinding bright light. It was mm -hmm. a very warm, like for me, it reminded me of what, when I lay in the sun, the sun in the summer, and I'm laying on the beach, and I'm laying in the sun, and I, my eyes are closed. That's like a tip of the iceberg feeling of what it was like. Mm -hmm. So I can get that little bit of reminiscing and stay connected to that by laying in the sun in the summer, and, and that's the little bit of it. But for me, I experienced being around other energies, and mm -hmm. other energies for me were like a soap bubble. And when I brushed up against the soap bubble, it kind of melded together a little bit, but I knew everything on how we were connected, the experiences we went through, everything about that soap bubble just by that quick brush of it. Wow. And it, that's what the whole thing was like up there. And I just knew that it wasn't my time. I knew I had to go back. I knew I had a purpose. Mm -hmm. And um, I was happy to go back. That was not a problem for me. And I did. I came back into my body. And for me, um, it was scary yeah. to come back in and to be knowing where I was and try to have conversations about it. And no one really experienced it that I had. So I stopped talking about it. But you changed a little bit, didn't you, from that experience? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, I wasn't afraid of death anymore. I mm -hmm. wasn't, um, and don't get me wrong, I don't want to die, knock on well, wood. No, I, uh, <laughs> you know, I, there's so much here I want to experience, and there's so much that I'm here to do. And it's exciting, and it's a privilege to be here. It's, I'm, not, I'm no longer afraid, and I'm, I know that I will be connected with the right people in order to get to my goal of accomplishing what I want to accomplish while I'm here what my legacy will be. And I relate to this because those of you who know me and have heard me talk about it a little bit, um, I drowned when I was three and I watched from above too. Um, I didn't have the soap bubbles, but I had kind of a, a warm, soft cloud that enveloped me as I watched. Mm. And then I went back. I went further the next time. And uh, it do what it does is it shows you that um, what we see and do and feel on Earth is not all of it. Right. And there's so much more to it that we don't see and we don't hear about, that we, that you know, there, there's another entity, there is more to life than just touching, feeling, here. you know, just what the senses yeah. can do. I agree. I like to look at it as we are a spiritual being having a human experience. And then I go even further with people talking to them about how, well, you know how you have a right arm and a left arm and you have an elbow, you have all these different parts of your body that make up your body. Mm -hmm. It's like that, but it's on um, an energetic level. You have this other way of being, these other senses. And just like you were taught to listen, you were taught to look for things, you were taught tasting things and smelling things and touching things, you have to develop these other senses. Everybody has them. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of how much do you want to develop them. The more you use them, the more they get developed. Right, exactly. Yeah. So um, then you moved on, you, you grow, grew up in a loving home, right? Yeah, um, I grew up in a, in a wonderful home. I grew up, I call it very tribal because um, tribal for me is I, ha I lived on a street um, where my grandparents lived across the street, my great-grandmother lived up the road, my aunts and uncles lived around, and my cousins. So every Sunday we always got together at my grandparents' mm -hmm. house and we had dinner. And then my dad's parents were up the street even a little farther. Instead of just being one block, they were two blocks away. And so we, I would also know my dad's side of the family with his parents and um, his sister and her family. So it was very nice for me growing up like that, that's what I call tribal. My family was right there and um, when my parents couldn't be there for something, because there were four of us and mm -hmm. both my parents worked full time, uh, one of my aunts would be there or my grandparents would be there. So I really felt like we were always with family. And Very. that's a wonderful, secure feeling for a child growing up, isn't it? Yeah. But you're surrounded by love. Somebody's always there for you. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Wonderful feeling. So I knew one day when I raised a family, I was either going to live near my family or I was going to live near my husband's family. Mm -hmm. And um, 
my family's happened, you know, as my siblings grew up, their jobs, they went other places, other states. Mm -hmm. And so um, we chose to live here in Connecticut near my husband's family. And in fact, we live in a neighborhood where one of his brothers lives around the corner and his, grand his parents are in the neighborhood and he's got a brother um, in another town and another brother that's in the same town, just on the other side of town. So that's everybody's great. living within the same area and we'll be getting together at his parents' house for Christmas. So. That's nice. a wonderful thing. So your, your family can experience the same thing that you experience. Your children can yes. experience that. Yeah, and that was very important to my husband and I. Those were values that were important to us, were that our kids knew that their, their grandparents and their aunt and uncles. Yeah. Well, let's, um, let's get back to before children and, and marriage. You went to college. Yes, I went to college for a year to Johnson State College up in Vermont and um, while I was there I was I was a dancer my whole life between the ages of four to even in college I minored in dance um, the one year that I was there and took a lot of dance classes but I knew they didn't have what I was really interested in so I felt like I was wasting my money mm -hmm. and as I did my research nobody anywhere had what I was interested in the closest thing was psychology but I knew I wasn't I wasn't on the realm of wanting to be a psychologist mm -hmm. so um, I, what was it you were looking for? I was looking for what I, well now it's um, metaphysical studies, but they didn't have that in traditional colleges. Mm -hmm. So I decided to only go to Johnson State for a year, and then I stopped going, and I got a full-time job in a shoe store. I became a, I worked myself up to a manager, and I went to school at night for travel, because I loved travel. So I became a certified travel agent. and. Um, after I had that job, I knew I wanted to work for an airline, but there were no openings. So what I did was I used my skill set and I got a job at the airport working for a car rental agency. And on my lunches, I would go over to the ticket counters at the um, airlines and I would talk to the people behind the counter. Well, eventually, within a few months, there was an opening and I interviewed and I got the job. And I loved that job. I did it for about three months and there was an opening in marketing. And I said, well, I can figure it out. I'm smart. I'll do this. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like without knowing I was using law of attraction, one of those principles, it's exactly what I did was I saw myself in the job, doing the job, um, being happy. Like I could feel myself being really happy doing the job. Mm -hmm. And when I went down to Hartford to interview, I got the job. It was just so I was a manifester before I even connected the dots on calling it, you know, oh, it's a law of attraction thing and it's manifesting. Right. I just I just did it automatically. I was very connected to that. And um, I loved it. I got a job uh, in marketing and I started uh, the Department of Revenue Control and Pricing for this commuter airline. And um, I co-wrote the manual. I hired three people. I ran the department. When I was tired of that, I left that job uh, and I got hired by Lego um, part-time in their credit department. And on breaks, I would go over to the marketing department <laughs> <laughs> and I would go hang out in the marketing department. Well, eventually there was an opening mm -hmm. and they bought out my contract from the temp agency. So I worked for Lego in marketing and I worked on where to put a theme park in the United States. Oh, that's cool. So that was cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was, a, it was a fun job, great company to work for. And at that point, um, I had gotten married, and uh, I knew I wanted to start a family. And, you know, my husband was like, you should really go back to school and, and get, a de you know, get, get your degree in something. Mm -hmm. And so I looked into community, community college, and I started up more with the psychology classes again, because I had taken quite a few of them. And I thought, all right, I'll just go for my two-year and, and mm -hmm. see what I, you know, where I'll go from here. So this is back in the, um, the early 90s. And the first day at my class for psychology, uh, the instructor um, was, you know, led the class. And at the end of class, she handed out these flyers. And on the flyer was she taught classes in the evenings on metaphysical studies. Ooh, ooh there's that word. And I was like, <laughs> I've been looking for this my whole life. And wow. so I ended up getting my two-year degree from that community college, but I went to her school. She's had the New England School of Metaphysics. I went there for six years. I took everything she had to offer, and um, I got my certifications, and she's like, you just need to go on your way. You've, there's more that you need to learn. And so uh, 
I did. I, I, I left that and I started taking other classes. I had a family. I, my kids were there at my graduation. Oh, um, how cool is so, that? So, <laughs> yeah, and they were really little. And I look back now and I go, I don't know how I did it. Yeah. People say, how'd you do it? I, I don't, I just did. I didn't know it any other way. Yeah. So... Yeah. It was fun, and uh, I, my husband and I, our values were that, you know, one of us was going to stay home and be with the kids. With his career, he traveled a lot, mm -hmm. and that was important to us. So um, I s chose to give up and stay home and be with my kids and loved every minute of it. Um, the hardest job I've ever done. Yes. And a lot of, you know, I went through some hard times with that. Yeah. That was really difficult because all of a sudden you're putting in hours 24-7 and there's no raises, no. there's no accolades, there's no, hey, you're doing a great job, there's no... And so in the process of that, I think as a human being to keep your spirit up, when you give, 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 you need to be filled up and yeah. sometimes a compliment will help fill you up. So by not getting any of that, mm -hmm. I really got lost. I really mm -hmm. started to um, almost get, I was angry. And I didn't know why I was angry. And uh, to the point, I mean, it's, it's, I can laugh about it now, but there was at one point when my husband was around, you know, came home from a trip and, and finally he just said to me after being home for a couple days, he's like, why are you angry all the time? And my response was, I'm not angry all the time. <laughs> you know, biting his head off. And I thought, whoa, wait a minute. Something's going on with this. Yeah. I know enough that I need to look at this because I've created this life. I wanted to be a wife. I wanted to be a mom. I wanted to stay home with my kids. That's a privilege. Mm -hmm. Why am I so angry? Why do I feel so empty? And it was because I didn't do things to take care of myself, to fill myself back up. Yeah. Because society standards were, if you did, well, how dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you you're put yourself selfish. first? Yes, you're being yes. selfish. So there was that whole struggle going on yeah. inside that I never really voiced. I didn't have anybody really to talk to about it. Because if I did try to broach it with somebody, I got, well, no, you're just being spoiled. Look at you. Look at the life you live. You're so lucky. How dare you? Mm -hmm. And that's not at all what this was about. No, no. So it's really interesting how society puts these standards on women and they're double standards than they are on men. Yeah. And, um, and I decided, you know what? Enough was enough. I'm not doing this anymore. And I, I wanted to take these parapsychology classes, and I told my husband I was going to do it at night, and he supported me, and we figured out that when he would go on a trip, and I had class, I had two um, high school babysitters that drove, and I would put my kids to bed for, like, dinner at 5, bath by 5.30, in bed by 6, reading books and so forth, so that by the time the sitter got there at 6.30 and I snuck out of the house at 6.45, the kids were pretty much sleeping, so they never really knew I was gone. So that was one way that I could live with myself as far as leaving my children yeah. and making it easier for them. Um, I just decided that's what I needed to do in order to fulfill what was going on in me. And by learning those classes and, and taking things, I got reconnected with my intuition. I got reconnected with things that I know, and by God, science can't prove them yet, but I just know it, mm -hmm. and I'm going with my gut. And at, you know, at, po at some point, my husband, I started taking a class on mediumship. And you know, I was talking to my husband, and I'm like, oh, this is the next class I'm gonna be taking. And he's like, holding his breath and like, <laughs> Okay, can you just promise me you're not in a cult? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. Trust, you have to trust me. Yeah. You have to trust me. And he said, all right, I trust you. And so he did. And so I was able to take those classes and um, I became a Reiki master, a Reiki master teacher certification along with a lot of other certifications. And I was able to put the material together in a way that allowed me to step into my authentic self again without feeling guilt, without mm -hmm. feeling shame, without feeling weird, without feeling um, 
any other negative label society wanted to put on it, I chose not to take it on. That was my choice. So for me, I empowered the things that had happened to me. I empowered myself by looking at them as, well, it takes two to tangle. So that situation happened. Let's see what role I played in it and let's see what lesson I got out of it. Sometimes it wasn't a role per se that I played in whatever situation it was. It was a situation that happened and I had to say, okay, well, how am I gonna learn from this? Mm -hmm. So that this doesn't happen again and move forward. And that's what I did. Do you know how many people are watching right now and they're <laughs> saying to themselves, oh my God, that's me. She's talking about me. I'm so frustrated. Or I was so frustrated and I didn't know what to do about it. You know, so many of us, and I went through this too. I was a single mother. Well, even before I was a single mother, I was a frustrated, unhappy wife mm -hmm. and didn't have a husband who supported me in anything, actually. And um, loved my children, loved being a mother, but I needed more. When you start working when you're 12 and you've always worked and loved it all the way and you don't, you don't get that fulfillment, you become frustrated and empty. Mm -hmm. And so you look for a way to, to fill that void that's missing. It has nothing to do with the fact that you're, you're not a good mother. Of course you're a good mother, mm -hmm. you know? Matter of fact, you can become a better mother yeah. by fulfilling yourself, finding out what you need. And I found out what I needed and it made a huge difference. Yeah. It's, um, it's interesting because when I would go for my physical or go see my doctor and they'd say, how are things? And when I was in the thick of things and it was difficult and I was trying to figure out why I was mad or why I was angry or how the ball got dropped for myself, yeah. you know, the doctor was very easily wanting to say, well, you know, I can give you something to help take the edge off that. Yeah. And I chose not to. And some women choose to. Mm -hmm. There is no right or wrong. You do mm -hmm. what you have to do. So I believe in allopathic medicine with holistic medicine. Mm -hmm. I think there's a balance of the both. Um, I'm not a medical doctor, but I've worked with some doctors where they have a respect for what I do, and I have a deep appreciation and respect for what they do. I used to volunteer at Middlesex Hospital. I used to go in every Friday for years. And I would volunteer and do Reiki energy work on, they called them clients, on the mm -hmm. people that were there so to get them well to leave. But also on the people that worked there, there were doctors that would say, hey, Deb, meet me in the lounge. I could use about 15 minutes of your work. So that was wonderful because to me that was appreciation for what I did. Yes. It's not always monetary. We all know people who have made a lot of money and they're miserable. So mm -hmm. it's not the money. Money doesn't buy you happiness. No, it doesn't. It's no. doing something that you feel like your heart is in it, you want to do it, and then you are having some type of acknowledgement for it. So appreciation is acknowledgement. Money is just an energy exchange. It helps us to purchase things. We all purchase too many things sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> it doesn't fill the void. No, it doesn't. No, it I, know doesn't. A lot of, I know a lot of people that are very, very happy with very little. So I, I am happier without, um, I mean, I've made a million dollars twice in my life. Mm. Was I happy? No. <laughs> no. Right, yeah. And um, I ended up, not being able to enjoy that money. It was, um, to me, it was a negative. Yeah, well, and there's a lot of societal standards around limiting beliefs with that too. We're told, what are we told about rich people? People with money. Ew, they're snobby, <laughs> they're yeah. this, they're that, whatever, <laughs> you know, whatever you want, whatever we were told. Mm -hmm. And so we had a different perception of money in our mind according to the things that we were told. And from people that loved us and told us the truths of what they yes. knew, we took that on. And uh, quite a few of us grew up with very little money. Mm -hmm. We had very little money in my family. And um, I turned out just fine, <laughs> <laughs> I <Yeah>. think. <laughs> like I said, my parents both worked full time. Mm -hmm. They had 
four kids. One of them had open heart surgery twice. Right. Uh, two of the kids had asthma, and my father had asthma. So, you know, my parents worked their tails off in order to make sure that our needs got met. Mm -hmm. You know, and we would go on vacation in the summer. Vacation for us would be going camping. We had a camper, and so we would go camping. Anywhere we went, we would travel in the car to go either down to the Washington, D.C. and see the Smithsonian or go down to yeah. the Grand Ole Opry or out to Niagara Falls, but we, um, mm -hmm. that's the way we traveled. And you know, I can remember my mom with her little notebook and writing down every, every little thing that she spent, she had a little notebook that she kept track of, so. Yeah. This, this sounds like an echo of what my childhood was. <laughs> Once a year, we'd all pile in the car yeah. and go on a trip and my mother would keep a diary and she'd also do the same thing, you know. <laughs> and spam yeah. sandwiches in the car. Oh my God, spam. Yes. Well, you know what? We need to take a little break, uh, okay. and we're going to come back. And what we're going to do when we come back is we're going to get a little more specific about um, what this energy vibration is and, uh, and how you can learn to help yourself, how you can learn to have Debbie help you, how you can learn to be happier and more balanced. Okay, so stay with us. We'll be right back. Tanning, indoors or out, the effects of harmful rays will show up on your skin. Wrinkles, age spots, and an increased risk of melanoma, the second most common cancer in women 15 to 29. Stop tanning. Time may not be on your side. Learn how to protect your skin at spotskincancer.org. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. You'd do anything to take care of that spot on your lawn, so why not take care of that spot on your skin? If you're a man over 50, you're in the group most likely to develop skin cancer, including melanoma, the cancer that kills one person every hour. Check your skin for suspicious or changing spots. Go to spotskincancer.org to find out what to look for. A message from the American Academy of Dermatology. Oh, hey, bud. We're, uh... Where are you headed? Uh, I'm just gonna hang out. With Gary and Todd? Yeah. I've been meaning to ask you, is there any drinking going on in this crowd? No. If any of your buddies ever pressure you to take a drink, just tell them you promised your dad you wouldn't. I'd do anything to keep you safe. Okay, I will. I hope this is working. I promise. Love you too, Dad. They really do hear you. For tips on what to say, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. And welcome back. We're here with Debbie Sodergren today. And uh, she is a specialist in energy vibration. It's, you know, that, that's kind of a foreign term to some of us. So why don't you explain to us what it means? Sure. So we have this physical body that we know of, right? This human body here. Mm -hmm. We also have what's called an, um, an energy body, which is outside of us. And it has many layers to it, just like you have different layers all the way down to your bone, you have different layers in your skin. So energy vibration is the vibration outside of the body, but also the vibration in the body. So the way I like to explain it to students is if you've ever been standing like at the kitchen sink doing the dishes and someone's trying to sneak up behind you and you turn and you get to them before they get to you, it's because you felt them out here with your etheric body. Ah. Yeah, so you felt them out here. And what happens is when something's going on for you and you're not paying attention to it, like a thought, a negative thought or something, um, you know you should be paying attention to it, you don't. Eventually, it's going to manifest somewhere in the body. Oh. Trying to get your attention. Okay. Yeah. So that's what happens with energy body. Um, I'm a part of my training. I'm an energy body vibration expert because I've been trained in the human energy field to work with energy outside of the body, but also inside the body. We have seven major energy centers from in the trunk of our body all the way up to the top of our head. And then we have 21 minor centers throughout the body and hundreds of sub-centers. So it, there's a lot going on. And when you learn to balance those areas and open them up, you allow yourself to live happier. 
You allow yourself to live in the moment. Um, there's this thing called the emotional uh, emotion. What's that? The emotional guidance scale. Mm -hmm. And usually in the lower energy centers of the body is where there's a lot of fear or things that happened to you from your past or things that have happened, um, you're worried about things for the future and it's not even here yet. And then as you w work yourself up in the trunk of the body to the higher energy centers, it's more about love, peace, spirit, and being connected to everything that is the crown chakra. Because what we know is we are a spiritual being having a human experience. What that really means is you are of this earth mm -hmm. and you are of the cosmos. You could say you're stardust. You could say that's part of the magic of you. But we know that we are of this earth. And we do, we can feel that. Science has now been able to come up with some techniques on working with metaphysical studies in order to um, show that they do actually exist. Um, a, great a great example of that would be Carillion photography. Carillion photography it is when you take your hands and you put them on these two metal plates and you're looking into a camera and it takes your picture, but what it takes the picture of you, it also takes the picture of your auric field that's around you. So it's really cool. That is, you can actually take a picture and see it. Yes, you can see the colors. I've had mine done three different times, and my colors are, some of them are the same, but sometimes they're in different locations. Sometimes there's black spotches, maybe where there might be a blockage for me and my energy field. Mm -hmm. um, in one of them, I was pregnant at the time with my third child, and you can see like this white spark of energy coming in in the picture. And so the, the person that had read it for me, read the picture after she took it, had said, oh, that's the spirit of the child around you in your energy field. So I thought that was fascinating. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so another easy way to think about energy vibration is, you know, have you ever picked up a stone and for some reason you just, it felt great to you, that particular mm -hmm. stone? So stones also are of the earth and they carry a vibration that can heal a part of your vibration that is open. It'll go into that particular area and then it'll spread throughout your other parts of your vibration that are stuck or in disharmony and it'll help to get them into harmony again. So there's that and there's music. We all know when we turn on the radio, we hear a song that we love, we get our foot tapping, we get mm -hmm. singing along the radio with it. It's because we are connecting with that vibration of that music, oh, which is really cool. That is cool. And you know how sometimes you go to get dressed in the morning and you put on um, a red shirt and you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're like, I'm just not feeling it. So you take it off and you put on another color, maybe bright blue or... Mm -hmm. maybe a yellow, and you're like, wow, I feel great in this shirt. Mm -hmm. It's because it carries a vibration. The color carries a vibration. So it's all connected. Wow, that is so <laughs> cool. <laughs> and is. we were talking about your color, your brand color, if you will, which is an, an orange. Yes, yes. So this Hold is... Hold up your book so people can see it. This is my book. And it's called um, Just Be, Your Path to Meditation and Awareness, The Mindful Way to Love Your Life. So this is available on Amazon, and it comes with a companion journal to write in. Okay. Um, so it's almost like a workbook. This guides you and you write things down? Yes. And reaction? Yes. So this will teach you a little bit about things, mm -hmm. and then I ask you a couple questions to ask yourself. And as you ask those questions, I... Um, I invite you to go into the journal and write your answers in the journal oh. so that you can actually um, I'm just helping people by giving them tools to help them open up to their self that they haven't really opened up to their subconscious that's fascinating but the orange we were talking yes, about so the, the orange. orange is about transformation the color orange is about transformation so that's why I did the color well it's my favorite color it's been mm -hmm. my favorite color my whole life so um, that's because you're supposed to help people transform. I believe so, and yes. I believe I'm always transforming. Mm -hmm. I am const I'm not the same person I was 12 months ago. I'm not the same person I was three weeks ago. Uh, I myself am transforming into who I'm supposed to be doing, you know, be doing and by being. So, 
Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting what you're talking about colors because, you know, I've studied colors. And, and, uh, but you're right. It depends upon your, your mood, I guess, if you will. Uh, your mood, the weather, um, external and internal, mm -hmm. right, influences you. Um, I decided to wear red today, but not a lot of red under the black. Um, not just because it happens to be a holiday color. It's, you know, it's December. Um, even though you may be watching this in the summer. Sometimes they're re-shown at different times of the year. But I decided to wear, not because it's a power color, but because I wanted to recognize that it is a a time of the year to be happy. Yeah. So many people are sad at this time of the year. I think so many people fill their socks, if you will, with sadness and, and, and old bad stories that they hang on to. Mm. And um, our lives today are so busy. And so much of the time we're thinking ahead of where we are. So we're not in that moment. And I know you're always telling people, be in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Realize the now, right? You've told me that several times. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. It's important. I wore green today because green is the heart color, believe it or not. When you're talking about the energy in the body, green is the, the heart color. So we're coming from our heart today. Yes, we're we having are. this conversation and we're helping to spread our message out into the world of people living to learn, learning to live in peace, mm -hmm. understanding happiness, joy, those are gifts of the spirit that we are all entitled to. We, anybody's entitled to those things. Money can't buy them. No, it can't. No, it can't. You know, it's health, happiness, um, abundance. Those are gifts of spirit. And mm -hmm. you get those gifts by transforming. And the way you transform is if you're always in the future, you can't appreciate where you are. No, So exactly. if you can't appreciate where you are today, how are you going to get there in the future? And if you're always in the past, dragging it behind you, um, you're not in the now. Right. Well, you're, you're living in the past. Yes. You're totally living yeah. in the past, yeah. Absolutely. So we've been talking about who you are, mm -hmm. okay? Um, sum up for me why you do what you do. I think... I do what I do because I am, I realize that life is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. And if I'm not living all in my authentic self on what my gifts are, then I'm not being authentic to the world. How dare me? Yeah. So I do this because nobody should feel like they're not worthy. Nobody should, just a lot of shoulds. I always tell people don't shit on yourself. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but life is meant to be abundant. Life is meant to be joyful, to be fun, to be silly. Right? Yes. I know we have lessons and sometimes it's hard, but it's our perspective of how we look at it on how quickly we'll get out of it or if we'll be able to turn it around. Because every situation has polarity. It's a positive and a negative. So it's depending what's going on in that situation, how you look at it, on what you're going to go for in your next decision. And that's what these are. Is this, uh, it's a bunch of decisions that we make throughout our day. Okay. And let's talk about the what, specifically. What it is that you do to help other people. So I have figured out through my own experience, the different tools that I've learned throughout all my teachings that I've done, all the different tools that I've learned, I've been able to put them together in a way where it helps people get unstuck. It helps them to be in the moment. And once you become in the moment, you can then see a future that's a little different. You can then get clarity about making a decision towards something. Mm -hmm. But you can't do those things until you get into the moment. And so I've, I've figured out tools and a program on how to get yourself into the moment so that you can move forward. Is there um, not really a quick fix or a band-aid or anything like that, but if someone is watching right now 
and they are sitting on their couch feeling really crappy mm -hmm. and they feel stuck just like they're in quicksand and they can't move and they don't know why and they don't know what to do sure. what do they need to do well I would invite you if you're feeling any of those things that Marilyn is describing I would invite you just to take a moment right now with us just sit on your couch. If you're laying down, sit up. Sit in a chair. Put your feet on the ground. Make sure your back is straight, your spine is straight in the chair. Put your hands either on the arms of the chair or on your lap. And I invite you to gently close your eyes. Just close your eyes for a moment. And get, you know, get into your body. And by doing that, you can take your hand, you can place it on your heart, you can feel your heart beating. And have some gratitude that your body does this automatically. You don't even have to think about it. And just tell yourself, thank you. Thank you for my heart beating. Thank you for my blood flowing through my veins. Thank you. And then once you're present in the body, I invite you to take a cleansing breath and for a cleansing breath I'd like you to inhale in through your nose and as you do expand your abdomen out and hold it at the top of the breath so you take a big inhale hold it at the top drop your shoulders now exhale through your mouth and pull your belly button to your spine do it again Big inhale in through the nose, expand the abdomen out, hold it at the top of the breath. And then exhale through your mouth and pull your belly button to your spine. Third time, big inhale in through your mouth, expand your abdomen out, hold it. And then exhale through your mouth and pull your belly button to your spine. And breathe normal. Do a nice big sigh if you need to. <sighs> Just be present. Be thankful that you were able to watch the show today. You can open your eyes. You can be thankful that you're in your body. You can be thankful that you are where you are. By having gratitude for in the moment, it takes the pressure off all the what ifs, all of the unknowns. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter wrote in her yearbook when she graduated from high school, worry is like being in a rocking chair. It's something to do, but it gets you nowhere. Oh, I love so that. to be so wise at such a young age mm -hmm. um, is a gift to me that you're like wow she actually was paying attention to some of the stuff she grew up around because I wasn't your average mom you know I, I was the kind of mom there I burned sage in the house or I had incense going and I have oils and you know if you have a cough I'm gonna offer you an oil before I offer you you know something else so mm -hmm. <laughs> but it depends I believe in both my kids did go to the doctors they did go to things and at times my kids were like mom I don't want what you're doing I just want to go to a doctor and mm -hmm. at that point you take them to the doctor and you let them have free choice yes they have free will and they have to learn on their own so, absolutely yeah now tell us what you do specifically and how it helps people okay so I wrote this book on meditation and awareness mm -hmm. because I think in order to get present and to get out of overwhelm you have to know how to go within you have to know to unplug from the world so I offer you tips and I teach you how to unplug from the world in the book I also teach you about the breathing in the book and there's other breathing techniques in the book also so I think it's really important to do the breath work first to connect with yourself inside and then that allows you it gives you permission to explore without any judgment other things that are coming up for you and what happens is a lot of stuff starts coming up about limiting things that you were told as a kid that no longer serve you I grew up Roman Catholic I went to a Catholic school and 
I was told that God was a man with flowing robes and a long beard and was going to judge me the day I died. And at some point in my adult life, I chose to not believe that anymore because I've evolved and I know differently. Mm -hmm. And it's okay to be different. And that's acceptable. And people need to learn that it's okay to be different. We can agree to disagree with somebody. That's an unconditional love. It is. And I think those are gifts that we deserve to give to ourselves and yeah. give to others. But I think as women especially, we need to learn to allow ourselves to forgive ourselves. Mm -hmm. There's times when and I teach this in my classes, you, you know, you, you get up and you go to the mirror and you're brushing your teeth and you're like, oh my God, look at those crow's feet or oh, another wrinkle or whatever that negative thing you say to yourself. How great would it be if tomorrow morning you get up, you go to the mirror, you brush your teeth and you're thinking, look at those gorgeous eyes. Wow, what a great smile. <laughs> and yeah. start your day with the positives. Trust exactly. me, your vibration's going to be higher and you're going to go about your day looking at life differently because you're not so negative. Not only that, but you're going to affect everyone around you yes. in a positive way. Right? Smiling at somebody for no reason will lift yeah. their spirits. Absolutely. It's the, it's the season for giving. So why not give of yourself? It's not always money. It's yourself. But it's opening a door for somebody who's got packages in their hands. Mm -hmm. It's letting somebody else go into a, a parking spot before you. It's those very simple things that will help raise your vibration in a way that you gave. It's mm -hmm. not a lot, but it's that little small step that makes the biggest difference, and it makes the difference in yourself first. And this is something new for some people, okay? Yeah. And so if you've got, well, you want to call it a habit or a repetitive activity that we do every day, um, that memory is in our muscles, it's in all of our cells, and we have to retrain ourselves. Yeah. Sometimes we need support to do that. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you've got a support group that helps you a lot, Mastermind. Yes. Um, people watching may not have any kind of support group. They may be kind of going this alone, mm -hmm. but everything that you're saying, they go, I want that, I want that, what do I do? So I know you've got um, do-it-yourself, yes. you've got group, and you've also got one-on-one. -on -one. Can you tell us a little bit about that briefly? Sure. So I have, um, for those of you that are on either... Um, Financially, you just you don't have the extra. It's the holiday season. I get it, but you still want to learn more about this. I offer some really great free information on my website. Mm -hmm. I have some great videos. I did a Block Talk radio show for a year as a co-host. They're 30-minute shows. You can put them on in the kitchen while you're doing something else and listen to it and get some ideas. They're very light-hearted and fun. Um, so those are some free things that you can do. My book is available on Amazon with the journal. It's under $20, so I, I kept it very affordable for people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then I do uh, group classes. I'll be starting some of those in January online for people that want to work with me and they're from afar. I do group online classes, and I do a four weeks of uh, meditation and then I, uh, an awareness, and I do an eight-week class on, it's called Infinite Possibilities, and it's based on Mike Dooley's program called Infinite Possibilities. Mine's called Thrive, so I've taken my teachings from him, and I've put it in with some of my own things throughout the years, and I've, it's now a program that I do with my clients. So I do a group program on that, and then I also work with people one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. that decide, you know what, I need to make this investment in myself and they work with me for the first four months and then they decide that you know it took them a long time to get to where they're at and it's going to take them a long time to help shift it absolutely and so um, they work with me for the first four months and then they work for me again for another the, usually year. I have clients that have been with me now for going on four years oh wow so. that's wonderful because um, that means that you're making a huge difference in their lives well, they have taken the step forward yes. to work with you to make a change in their lives. Yes. And, you know, nobody can really do it for you, but to have a guide, someone who's an expert, and she is an expert, 
you can trust her. She's obviously, have you, have you, uh, have, as we've been talking over this hour, you've seen that she knows what she's, she lives what she talks about, okay? And she relates to who you are and what you've been through. And she's just a, a wonderful guide. And um, oh, thank you. So your your contact information is is been up, okay. on and off, and I just this has been a wonderful show. Thank you so much, Debbie. Oh, for coming thank on you the for show. having me. This has been fun, and I love what I do. I am doing what I came here to do. I'm I'm here to help people reconnect to their spiritual being, and mm -hmm. bring that into their human being so that they can move forward in their life in a way that they love being here. And that is, that's what it's about. It is. It's, it it's is. what it's about. And I love what I do. And I also, when people work with me, um, I do energy sessions for people also. And they'll come to me and I have a, a table, like a massage table, and you're fully dressed and you come for a one hour session. And I work with putting my hands on the different energy centers within the body, helping to get them aligned up and help to open them up so that you can feel good for the next couple days. Usually my clients say it lasts about three days, two mm -hmm. to three days. And um, I have clients that see me once a month. Mm -hmm. I have clients that see me when they're in crisis, they'll see me a couple times a week and um, they get it. They, there's something about it that they feel so much better after working with me, and they've gotten great results. Some of my clients have gone down on different medications. I've had Parkinson's um, patients. I've had different people with different ailments, and they've gone back to their doctor, and their doctor's like, what are you doing? <laughs> And they're like, it's working. Oh, this woman I'm working with, they're like, well, I need to talk to this woman. So I've talked with some doctors too, and if I can help if I can help empower somebody to be their best self, then I'm happy. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Be your best self. Thank you. Thank you. I always like to end the show in a quote. Um, and I couldn't quite decide among a whole bunch of quotes I saw. But I felt, you know what, let's talk about happiness. Mm. So here's one from Thomas Morton. Happiness is not a matter of intensity, but of balance and order and rhythm and harmony. Mm. I like that. So find your true balance. What would you like your life to look like? That's what you need to ask yourself, okay? And then watch this show again. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. It's, it's been wonderful. I'd like to thank our, our sponsors for making our show possible. And um, I would like you to also send me emails and let me know what you like, even what you don't like. I'm open to that. And send me ideas of someone that you would like me to have on the show. Okay? I appreciate you joining us today, and we will see you next time.